Welcome back to Never Hire Me, the series where I tell you the main reasons I get hired and the things that you need to know to ensure that you never need to hire somebody like me. Today we're talking about matching numbers to ranges. Let's get into it. Matching a number to a range, there's so many people out there trying to do this one. If you watch this video, you can learn how to do it yourself. Firstly, thank you to Philip for sending in this example. You can quickly read his email if you wish. This is the file he sent in. Now, Philip is working in the military and he's doing this press-ups test. So he has this table and down in this area, in this column, we can see the number of press-ups completed. And then at the top, we have these age groups. Now, he wants to put this information in and then get a score out of the table, extract a score from the table. So what are we going to have to do? Well, we have to match a value here. You know, that's easy enough because the values are all listed out. The more difficult part and the focus of the video is we have ranges here. We have the ages, they're, the ages, they're configured as ranges. We need to fit a value into those ranges. We want to be able to input an age. Excel will put it into one of those ranges and get this calculation done for us. Very difficult. A lot of people get stuck uh, with this kind of thing. So what are our options here? Well, we're going to look at two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is using VLOOKUP. In fact, we're going to use HLOOKUP to do this because of the orientation of the data here. So a couple of things to note first, and this isn't something you can just jump into. I'm sorry, I can't give you a quick answer for this one. We can't just jump into it. We, jump into it. we have to do a little bit of preparation. So first, we have to take our groups and you can see our groups are written up at the top here and then redefine them with lower bounds. So the lower bound of each group here, we've got 17 to 21. The lower bound is 17, 22 to 26. The lower bound is 22. We're going to take those lower bound values and just input them into cells. Excel is not going to understand the ranges defined like this, 17 hyphen 20, 21. Excel's not going to easily understand those. Excel can easily understand uh, the lower bounds. So let's just quickly look at how we might do that. Uh, you can do it manually, but if you've got hundreds of rows of data, that's not going to be convenient. So let's see if we can do this using a left formula just to extract the two values at the beginning uh, of the data, if you like. So I've just put in left there selected the cell and then two is going to just take two characters there so that's good that gives us 17. we want to make sure these are displaying as values as opposed to displaying as text we know that can cause problems in excel so i'm just gonna uh, embed that left formula in a value formula and that gives us uh, what we need and then i can auto fill right control r on the Windows PC and you can see we've got our lower bounds there. So we've got a setup that we're building and that's going to make the formula building much easier. But we do need to go through these steps. Secondly, if we're going to use HLOOKUP, well, we need to give Excel something to look up. And in this case, we're just going to have a number. We're going to give each of these groups kind of a theoretical number. And we're going to use that number later to do this lookup. So we need numbers as well. With that setup and only with that setup, we're ready to get started matching a number to a range. So we've got our formula cell. Make sure you're working along with me. We're going to say equals H lookup, hit the tab key, and then we get our prompt. So lookup value. So we've got our age input cell here. That's going to be our lookup value. And then Excel is asking for the table array. This is the part where you're most likely to make a mistake. So be extra careful here. Well, we want our lookup values uh, to be in the top of the range, the first row in the range. Just as we, if we were doing a V lookup, we'd want the lookup values to be in the leftmost column of the range. We're using H lookup. So those lookup values, we want them to be on the top of the range. Uh, so that's our table array there. And we're going to hit the F4 key uh, just to uh, fix those values and make that reference absolute. 
Finally, uh, well, third row index number. So we've got the first row and the second row. Which row contains the value we want the formula to return? Well, it's not the first row. That's just the lower bounds. It's the second row. That's going to give us a value that we can subsequently combine with offset to get this drop job done. Then finally, also a critical element here, we're going to use approximate match here. Why is it approximate match? It's approximate match because we're matching to a range. We don't have all of our values in the table. If we look in row six, if I was looking up 28, for example, 28 doesn't appear in that table. So we're going to use approximate match. That means Excel is going to take these values, convert them into ranges and match our values to a range. That's exactly what we want. And don't worry if you don't understand that. It will become clear as we work through. So we're going to just put a one here, which Excel is going to understand as true. Then we can close this bracket. Just a quick check on the formula, looking up the right value. The range looks OK. The row index looks OK. And we have one for the fourth component there. And what do we get? OK, we've got a three. So Excel is saying, OK, 28. I've put a group three. The lookup has returned three. So let's do some testing here. Let's just try 17 and 17. We're expecting it to return a one. It has returned a one. And let's just try 65 and Excel has returned a 10 there. OK, so we've done some quick testing, but in this spreadsheet, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do some more testing. It's the kind of testing I would do, do myself. I've got a testing area uh, down here in column C. So let's take that formula, our HLOOKUP formula. Let's put it in the testing area. That's going to allow us to test lots and lots of values. So HLOOKUP again, always good practice anyway to repeat a formula. Where's our lookup value? Well, in this case, we're going to use the lookup values in column B that I've set up for you in the testing area. The table array is going to be the same as before. Make sure we're accurate with this. We want those lookup values in the first row. It is important this time, use the F4 key, get the dollar signs in. It's an absolute reference because we're going to copy this formula down. We want the formula to keep looking at the same table. We need an absolute reference for that. And then we want the formula to return a value from the second row. And then we want approximate match because we're matching to a range here. OK, and does it look reasonable? Yes, 17 is in group one. I'm just going to double click in the bottom right hand corner here. And yeah, we've auto filled down. So 22 should be in group two. Yes, that's true. And let's say let's look at 62 should be in group 10. Just go back to the top quickly. And yes, 62 should be in group 10. Let's do one in the middle. 45 should be in group six. That makes sense. 46 should be in group six too. Yes. And just doing this just outside of your screenshot. And then 47 should be in group seven. Go back to the top and check that. OK, and that seems to be accurate. So you may say, Chris, you spend so long explaining stuff. A lot of people do in the com comments, but I'm not going to shortchanging you by just giving you a quick solution. I'm trying to teach you the skills to make sure you can do this yourself and you don't need to ask the IT guy at your company. You don't need to potentially hire somebody like me. You need to know the skills and that includes proper testing. So this is one possible solution for us. We've got HLOOKUP and we're satisfied that that's working well. There is an alternative formula. Can you think yourself of another formula that you might use uh, to get this done? We could use we could use the match formula uh, two to get this done. And this has an additional benefit of not needing this row, not needing part of the setup that we've put in. So it's a bit more kind of space efficient, doesn't need that, that additional row. That's possibly uh, an advantage for us. So match and then the lookup value as before is up here. The lookup array is different uh, to HLOOKUP. We're just going to select uh, the lower bounds this time. Now we're going to put the absolute reference in there. And then the match type. Now, this is important. We're going to set this match type to one. We can see from the props, prompts there, if we set the match type to one, it's going to find the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. So it's going to look at those column headers, find the largest values that that is less than or equal to the lookup value. Again, don't worry if you don't understand that. I'm very bad at understanding that kind of logical statement. Don't worry, work it through, test it and kind of prove to yourself uh, that it's working. OK, so 65 is matching to group 10 using the match formula. Let's change this to 27, 27 matching to group three, 32 should be matching to group four. 
satisfied with that or am I? Well, I'd like to do another test, a more comprehensive test. Let's go down to our testing area. And, you know, repetition is key with formula building. Excel is just a skill and it gets better with practice. It's not going to get better without practice, uh, unfortunately. So look at value here. Absolute uh, look at value shouldn't be here. Look at value just in the table, of course. We don't need an absolute reference there because that reference is going to go down when we take the formula down. Look up array this time, just a single row because we're using match and we do need to fix this reference. That reference is going to stay the same wherever the formula goes. And the match type we've already discussed is going to be one in this case. Also fill down. I uh, haven't got any ref, haven't got any uh, errors. That's a good sign. So 29 matches to group three. Let's go all the way down to the bottom here, all the way down to the bottom. And for example, 80 would match to group 10. Seems to make sense. Something in the middle, uh, 37 would match to group five. Just out of your screenshot there, 37 would match to group five. So there I'm doing the testing that I would uh, normally do. And yeah, going through the formula in a very kind of deliberate way, slowly, steady. That's the way uh, to build. That's the way to build this particular skill. So that's how to match a value to a range. Now, you can, to complete this task, you might want to stop the video. How would you complete this task? I have included the completed mechanism over here. We can combine offset with match or with HLOOKUP in order to get this done. So we've got the power of multiple formulae working together. But hopefully that helps you understand how to match a value to a range, build the skill yourself, make sure you don't need to hire somebody like me.